Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Timothy Atik from Vertical Ministries. He was back with us again this week, bringing a message from Ecclesiastes 3, A Time for Everything. Welcome. Glad, glad to, to have here. you back again. Always yes, good last to be week here. was awesome and continued. This week was such a great message Thanks. from Ecclesiastes. Um, we had lots of questions come in, yep. mainly around some of the same themes. Um, one of the first questions we had to come in, you know, was around community. Yep. Um, can you speak to the importance of being in fellowship with uh, people who are in the same or different season of life with you? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I, I think about what Solomon says. You know, in the next chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, and he just gives these beautiful pictures of the idea that two are better than one. He talks about how, you know, there's a better return for your work. So if you're living life together, you, you can be more productive. But then he says, if you fall into a pit, it's always nice to have someone there yeah. who can pull you out. And I think it has everything to do with what we talked about today. You know, it, it's good to, to walk through life God has wired us to live life in community, and those people can be there in the good times to, to remind us to be grateful people, but especially in the bad times when it comes to being faithful. We need men or women around us who are going to, to help us walk uh, God's path for our lives, because I think, as I said today, a lot of times in the midst of pain, we pacify our pain with sin, and uh, we need people in our lives who can just kind of provide some boundaries and remind us of truth so that, you know, our feelings don't take over mm. and lead us astray. That's so good. Okay, so a lot of the questions came in around, around this. And I think anytime we talk about God's sovereignty, the questions arise about what is, what is my free will? How does that look? Do we really make decisions? How, how does that balance out? And a lot of the questions are around that. Can you speak yeah. to that too? Well, so I, I'll just start off by saying, you know, it, it would be impossible for me to, to address this in a five, 10 minute video, something that people have been arguing about and debating for not just a few years, but hundreds of years. And um, I, think, I think the best thing I can say, at least in my own personal convictions, is the Bible teaches both, mm. teaches uh, God's sovereignty and man's free will. I mean, the, the verse that I always think of, which I think puts the two back to back is John 1, 12 and 13. It says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So if you stop right there, you think just free will, like it's it's all up to me to choose God, mm -hmm. to receive Him. For as many as received Him, those are the people that Jesus gave the right to become children of God. But then you keep reading in verse 13, it says, these people were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Mm -hmm. So you see free will, yet you see, man, uh, you see man's free will, yet you see God's sovereignty. I think that the Bible teaches both. And the Bible does not give us all of the information we need to, to see how these two interact with one another and complement one another correctly. And I, I, think, that, I think that that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that God has been intentional about it, it being that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think about what Paul says in, in Romans chapter 11, he says, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, how inscrutable are his ways for who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor. It's just this idea that God is infinite and we're, we're not. Our minds are so limited. Our ability to understand what God understands, mm -hmm. we, we just don't have it. Yeah. And so when it comes to nailing down, is it God's sovereignty or man's free will? The answer is yes. The Bible teaches both. And, um, you know, the studying I've done, people either lean really hard on God's sovereignty mm -hmm. or they lean really hard on 
man's free will. And I think that that does a disservice to the scriptures, which teaches that man is responsible, mm. yet somehow God is sovereign. And mm. so, if anything, it should just draw us nearer to, to worship him that we can't fully comprehend everything, yet I'm, re I'm responsible to know God's word and to walk in it. So don't get caught up on, mm -hmm. do I really have free will? Well, you, you think and you act and you make decisions, make mm -hmm. those according to the Lord. Yeah. Is God sovereign? If he's not, I don't want to know him. You know what yeah. I mean? He, he can so be trusted. God, yes. So. Great, thank you. Um, and so another question was asked, um, it was asked this way, does God put things in our lives to see how we will react? I um, I totally understand what the, the question is going for. I, And I think it's a great question. I think the way it's worded can make God out to be, um, you know, an, an imperfect father. God mm -hmm. is a perfect father. So to, to put things, it's almost like he's, screw, you know, trying to get us to, to mess up. Maybe that wasn't the way the question was going, but it's really a question of does God test us? Like, mm -hmm. will he put things in our path to test us? And the answer is absolutely he will. And James 1 talks about it. It, it talks about the testing of our faith in, in God will will put things in our path that will absolutely challenge our faith. He will put us in situations where we have no choice but to trust Him. And James says that the testing of our faith produces endurance. So God does put things in our path with an ultimate goal of expanding our dependence upon Him, expanding our faith in Him, so that we would be more fully functioning followers of mm of Christ. That's what trials will do is it will, it refines us, it presses out the impurities in our life, draws us back to Him. Well, let's talk more about the trials and the suffering okay. because a lot of questions came around that, which yeah. you made very good about being, being grateful in the good times, being, just being grateful. Yep. And then the, the side of that is if your, your season is one of struggles or just be faithful in that. So practically, what does that look like? Is faithfulness something that we just um, muster up? Like how, how can we be faithful in those times? Yeah, well, the, the first place I have to point you is to the, the fruit of the Spirit. Faithfulness is one of the, the fruit of the Spirit. And so when I talk about being faithful in the bad times, I'm not saying you just need to, you need to, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You need to muscle through it. It's all on you. No, what I'm really calling you to do is to press into the Lord more and and ask for Him to sustain you. Um, even this morning, I was asking the Holy Spirit to fill me, mm -hmm. to fill me up, because I felt low mm -hmm. on the Spirit. And so every day we need to ask the Spirit to fill us with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So it, to be faithful in the bad times, is it, it starts with a deeper dependence on the Lord mm. of just saying, God, I cannot get through this apart from you. So I need your strength. I need your wisdom. <laughs> I need your joy to be the thing that sustains me through this. Um, but then the, the, other, the other thing is, I, I always tell college students, you can't know the will of God without knowing the Word of God. Mm. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite pastors, he, he said, I love this, he said, feelings are real, they're just not always reliable. Mm. And, you know, when you get in a really tough time, y your feelings can tell you to do all sorts of things that are contrary to the will of God. And just because it feels right doesn't mean that it actually is right. And so that's why it's so important to know the Word of God because then you will stay in the grooves of the will of God. So, for example, if, you, um, if your marriage is really struggling, feelings might tell you you have a right to be happy. Well, I don't find that verse in the Scriptures. What the Scriptures call you to do is it's, it's not about feeling love, it's about choosing to mm -hmm. love. Love is patience, patience is a choice. Love is kind, that is a choice. And so 
that that type of faithfulness a lot of times is going to be doing the opposite of what feels right. And so that's why it's so important to be, you know, saturating your, your life with the Word of God. When it comes to employment, if you've been out of employment for a while, there can be this, this uh, tendency to, to compromise some, some standards in terms of who you're willing to be and what you're willing to do. And you might step into a position where you have to make decisions and operate in a way that would compromise your character and integrity. And that's not what God is calling you to do, if this makes sense. And so that the, the Word of God will help you to walk um, in the will of God and to do it with people around you. That's what it's going to, that's how you're going to get from, you know, how you're going to make it through the, the tough times. That's what it looks like to be faithful is to submit yourself to the leadership of the Holy Spirit every day, but then to read the word and to be a doer of the word. Good, good. This message was great. And I, I know um, many people needed to hear about the seasons, especially myself. Yeah. Sometimes you get into seasons and you think you might not ever get out of it. Yeah. Um, but just such a good reminder to be grateful and to be faithful. And so thank you for bringing that today. You and bet. thank you for being back with us. You bet. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.